from the University of South Carolina. Your news, your sports, your weather. Carolina News begins now. Hello, and welcome to Carolina News Fastcast. I'm Mikhail Alvarado, coming to you from Columbia, South Carolina. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, our newsroom is working across the U.S. to bring you top news stories every day. Due to a rise in coronavirus cases in the U.S., President Trump has decided to extend social distancing guidelines through April 30th. President Trump previously expressed that he wanted to relax social distancing guidelines by Easter, April 12th. His decision to extend them comes after members of the Coronavirus Task Force showed models predicting 100 to 200,000 deaths from the disease in the U.S. We're going to have millions of cases. What we do know is that we got a serious problem in New York. We have a serious problem in New Orleans, and we're going to be developing serious problems in other areas. Over the weekend, President Trump asked the CDC to issue a strong travel advisory in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, lasting 14 days. President Trump says a quarantine will not be necessary. The number of cases and deaths due to coronavirus have risen in the United States. According to the World Health Organization, there are around 140,000 cases in the U.S., over 2,000 deaths, and more than 4,000 recoveries. In South Carolina, there are 113 new confirmed cases, bringing the statewide total to 774. And on Sunday, another death was reported, bringing the total number of deaths in South Carolina to 16. Governor Henry McMaster has issued an executive order to protect South Carolina during the COVID-19 outbreak. And he's given emergency powers to the Department of Health and Environmental Control. To protect first responders, the order requires anyone calling 911 to be questioned if anyone close to them has symptoms of COVID-19. It authorizes state colleges and universities to finish the school year through virtual learning. The order also activates anti-price gouging laws and prevents visitors from going to nursing homes, prisons, and jails. In an effort to stop further spread of the coronavirus in Colombia, a citywide stay-at-home order is now in effect. The order went into effect Sunday morning and will last for two weeks. The order restricts most movement through the city except for those who work at essential services. Essential healthcare, infrastructure, manufacturing, essential retail organizations, and financial institutions can remain open. Law enforcement and providers for the economically disadvantaged will also remain open. For a detailed list of businesses that are essential services, you can go to our Twitter page. Stay-at-home orders are going into effect in big cities around the Palmetto State, and the unemployment rate is soaring. Disruption in the workplace due to the coronavirus left more than 31,000 South Carolinians unemployed, according to the Department of Employment and Workforce. Two of the state's largest cities, Charleston and Columbia, have stay-at-home orders in place, meaning more individuals are filing for unemployment daily, marking a 1,600% increase in filings since last week. Horry County and Charleston saw the largest increase in claims due to a sharp decline in tourism. Filing for unemployment with the department is now completely online. For more information, visit dew.se.gov. The coronavirus spread to another county in South Carolina over the weekend, leaving the state with only six virus-free counties. But one business in the newly affected area has been preparing for this moment since it all began. Emma Milner is in Lawrence County with the story. How are we going? All right, good. Good. Tucked away on East Carolina Avenue is the only coffee shop in Clinton, South Carolina. It was a college town, didn't have a coffee shop. The Vestable Coffee and Tea celebrated two years of business on March 1st, but the celebration was cut short due to COVID-19. Um, anywhere from 25 to 50 percent of my business has dropped on average. I've had some days that were probably 70 percent less than my average business. Governor Henry McMaster issued an executive order on March 16th, stating restaurants and bars could no longer provide sit-down dining. Not wanting to close, the festival began offering a new way for customers to get their coffee. In order to keep their customers safe, the festival now has a curbside pickup option. All you have to do is call ahead, place your order, and someone will bring it out to your car. Lawrence County learned of its first case of COVID-19 over the weekend, but even before the virus spread, Martin was doing all he could to keep his customers safe. So I, I go through our shop multiple times a day. I have a food grade sanitizer. I have a, a, um, it's a, it's a cleaning solution that you, you can buy from any store. Um, it's a disinfectant antiviral type thing. I'll, I'll take the precautions I have to do to, to try to keep everybody safe. Fortunately for the vestibule, summer is always their slow time of year due to the lack of college students. 
But even with summer coming early, Martin says he has been amazed by the support his community has given him. Taken back by just the amount of support people are giving me, even if it's not business support. I just get people saying just, hey, we're here for you. Let us know if you need anything or we're praying for you. And knowing this community, prayers and coffee orders will continue to come in long after COVID-19 passes through. Reporting from Lawrence County, Emma Milner, Carolina News. To find out how you can support small businesses in your community, follow us on Twitter at USC Carolina News. President Trump has signed the stimulus bill, making the largest stimulus bill in United States history a law. It's going to save companies that are incredible companies, but that are going to need some help because of what happened. The stimulus plan suspends student loan payments, adds protection against foreclosure, and helps the airline and travel industries. Single individuals could receive as much as $1,200 if they make $75,000 or less per year. Couples could receive $2,400 depending on their income, and most parents would get $500 per child. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin says Americans could receive funds in three weeks through direct deposit or by check. We are committed to move forward quickly, and we're going to get money in people's pockets quickly. The economic aid package has $350 billion for small business loans. If businesses continue to employ and pay their workers, a portion could be forgiven. It's unknown how long it could take for small businesses to receive loans, but government officials hope to work fast. For Carolina News, I'm Sydney Clowans. How much you receive is based off of your 2019 tax returns. If you haven't filed yet, then it will be based off of your 2018 return. The National Guard is now delivering personal protective equipment and other supplies to South Carolina in an effort to fight COVID-19. Supplies like respirators, face masks, face shields, surgical gowns, and gloves were delivered Friday. The pallets were delivered to every county in support of the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control. New York City is the epicenter of coronavirus in the U.S. Situated close by in Cheshire, Connecticut, reporter Leah Kazmarek explores the impact this is having on hospitals in New York. The city that never sleeps has gone indoors. A once bustling Park Avenue, a once crowded subway station, and a once bumper-to-bumper -bumper FDR drive are now quiet. New York right now is pretty tense. As of early this morning, there are 59,000 cases of coronavirus in the state of New York and 965 deaths, making New York City a hotbed for the virus. My brother, Andrew Kazmarak, is a hospital consultant for Premier Inc. dealing with supply chain management. Supply chain has come more to the forefront has had more of an emphasis than ever before. Um, so where I'm as busy as I've ever been. Manufacturing has also taken a slowdown due to shutdowns in China as well as the European countries, um, not exporting products to the U.S. So there's a greater strain in that regard as well. New York City hospitals, like many around the country, are running short on supplies like ventilators, gloves, and face masks. According to the New York Times, there are 2.8 hospital beds for every 1,000 people in the United States, making even beds a scarce resource. Modern medical care is so amazing that hospital stays aren't designed to be as long as they are for COVID patients. So even beds are starting to become higher and higher in demand and they're running sh short on those. Around the country, manufacturing companies have shifted their production to suit the needs of the nation. While supplies are tight for the moment, Kazmarek and the Premier Inc. team are trusting that hospitals aren't over-ordering supplies. As China begins to pick up production more, we'll start seeing more um, manufacturing coming, over, uh, coming overseas as China starts back up. For now, hospitals around the country are making adjustments wherever possible. Reporting from Cheshire, Connecticut for Carolina News, I'm Leah Kazmarek. Around the country, businesses and individuals are mobilizing to cater to growing needs. The University of South Carolina is working on a solution to the mask shortage that's sweeping the nation. USC's mechanical engineering department is using 3D printers to create face shields for colleagues at MUSC. Faculty, staff, and students have taken the printers home to create essential personal protective equipment for those at the medical center. Students are able to produce between 150 to 200 pieces of headgear a day. USC is planning to ship 500 shields to MUSC next week. The FDA has approved a new 15-minute coronavirus test created by Abbott Laboratories.
The test uses Abbott's small portable ID Now platform where results can be done directly in emergency rooms or urgent care. This new test could accelerate testing in the US. However, shortages in equipment used to collect patient specimens like masks and swabs could affect its impact. Abbott Laboratories said it expects to deliver 50,000 tests per day beginning this week. Also this week, there are a range of temperatures and conditions in the Palmetto State. Now we'll go to Allie Cameron in Rock Hill to hear about what kind of weather we can expect to see in South Carolina for the next few days. Allie? Thanks, Makala. Yes, I'm in a sunny Rock Hill, South Carolina, but unfortunately this nice weather isn't going to last much longer. Hopefully you made the most of your social isolation this weekend with the nice warm weather that we had because unfortunately we have rain on the way. But first, let's look at tonight's lows. Columbia will have a low of 58 degrees and it's not going to be much warmer anywhere else in the state. Mid 50s across most of the state. It'll creep into the 60s, however, on the coast. Now for tomorrow's highs. It's going to be cold in the upstate with high 50s and low 60s. 66 in Columbia. The record high was 88 degrees in 1986 and we're not going to get anywhere near that. The high for the state for tomorrow will be 77 degrees in Hilton Head. Now we do have a river flood warning for Richland County, especially for the Congaree River at the National Park. So be careful if you're going out hiking or walking around that park. Now for the five day forecast, like I said, unfortunately we have rain on the way for tomorrow. Tuesday afternoon showers are expected with a high of 66 and a low of 48. Wednesday will be our coldest day with only a high of 64 and lows of 46. Then for Thursday, Friday and Saturday we're going to see similar weather throughout the day. 69 degrees being the high on Thursday with it partly cloudy. And then warming up to the weekend of around 72 degrees on Saturday. Now unlike the weather anchors before me, I don't have a dog which I can take out on a walk to enjoy this nice weather. However, I have two cats sitting at the door to my balcony wondering why they're not allowed out to enjoy the nice weather with me. That's all I have for you right now. Let's go to Anya in Colombia, who has the sports for us. Anya? Thanks, Ali. After the 2020 Olympic Games were postponed due to the coronavirus pandemic, athletes and fans around the world were waiting to hear when they would be rescheduled and finally got an answer today. The International Olympic Committee announced this morning that the Olympics will begin on July 23rd, 2021. The closing ceremony will be on August 9th, exactly one year after the original date. There has also been fears that holding the games too soon would cause further postponement or even prevent some athletes from competing due to logistical challenges and scheduling. No Olympic Games have ever been postponed before, and the International Olympic Committee says celebrating the opening of the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games on July 23rd, 2021 is ideal. The sports season has also come to a screeching halt for Gamecock Athletics and for senior spring athletes, an unexpected end to their college careers. Gamecock women's basketball were waiting to play at the NCAA tournament and hoping to bring home the national championship this season. However, seniors Taisha Harris and Makia Herbert Harrigan may be able to get back on the court. The WNBA is still having their draft on April 17th, virtually, and both players have hopes of being drafted. ESPN's latest mock draft shows Harris as a first round pick. We have high hopes for both Gamecock players and are looking forward to April 17th. After the Carolina Panthers released quarterback and former NFL MVP Cam Newton after nine seasons, they signed a new quarterback. The Panthers signed Teddy Bridgewater to a three year, $63 million contract. Bridgewater was 5-0 as the starting quarterback of the Saints last season and is looking forward to playing for his new team. He's taking his chance and uh, believing in me. Um, I'm excited about this opportunity that I have uh, to continue my career in Carolina. That is all I have for you today in the world of sports. Mikaela, back to you. Thanks, Anya. In a time of uncertainty, one man proved that love knows no boundaries. Canadian-Egyptian man Ihab Burai caught the last flight from Cairo to Quebec yesterday to propose to his girlfriend despite airport scares. I didn't think we had time to waste, right? Uh, I mean, uh, I, I'm potentially exposing my fiance to a very scary virus. I didn't know how much time we would have, uh, but I didn't want to waste any time. Barai took the risk in hopes of being together during the lockdowns in Canada and to support his now fiance due to her family being stuck in Italy. Barai said the couple plans to have their wedding in Italy once it's safe to travel again. That'll be an incredible story to tell the kids one day. That's all the time we have for you today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.